Hi there, well with uh, lockdown easing uh, we've managed to get a small family gathering together to celebrate Christmas and exchange some presents. I was absolutely blown away uh, with the present that uh, my daughter Beth and her boyfriend Luke got me. It's fantastic and I can't wait to get it up on the wall. Um, and uh, in this video I'm going to be machining the flywheels for the odds and ends engine. Ok so these are the general dimensions of the flywheels and the drawing calls for uh, hot rolled steel to be used which I think Earl's using steel um, but I'm going to go for uh, cast iron. So I've got a couple of these cast iron billets and um, I think first of all what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, one in the four jaw chuck on the lathe, um, centre it up and I'm going to machine as close as I can the outside edge, um, as close as I can to the jaws of the four jaw chuck. Once I've done that I'm going to then face this end here. Now this recess um, I think Earl's going to try and machine that in the lathe but I don't think I'll have much success. I'm going to, I'll give it a try but I think I'll end up machining that out uh, using the mill. So uh, having sort of faced sort of this side off, I'm going to uh, drill and ream to 3 8 of an inch. Then I'll switch it round in the four jaw chuck, uh, set it up uh, centred again using a dial gauge. And then I'll just machine uh, the remaining of the outside edges and then face this side um, so it's 7 8 of an inch uh, in width. Then, like I say, I'll transfer it to the rotary table and I'll do, I think I'll be doing this type of machining on the rotary table and uh, uh, drilling these holes as well on the rotary table. Well I think that's as close as I can get it. And this is a very cheap gauge by the way. Okay, so I've set a stop, so I can't go beyond this point here. I'm just missing the jaws, so I'll cut at the slowest speed, about 100 RPM, and uh, using sort of fine increments, see how we get on. So I'm going to cut it around about five thou at a time. It'll take a while, will this? Well, I'm gradually getting there, and uh, I'm using the fine feed on the carriage to take these cuts. But it's taking a long time.
Well, that looks okay. I had to take 50 thou off at each side, so that's 100 thou in total. Um, so now I need to uh, face this. Again, I'm only going in 5 thou increments, taking it nice and steady. It's going to take a long time. Well, I'm uh, now using the power feed on the cross slide. I'm only cutting at five thousand a time. So this is going to take forever. Well, with there being less of an interruptive cut, I've been uh, cutting to a depth of 10 thou, and I'm really nearly there, so uh, hopefully we'll be, this will be the final pass. And uh, I'll start cutting at uh, 200 RPM. Well, that's worked out pretty well um, so what I'm going to do now is I've decided I'm going to uh, drill and ream this to three eighths of an inch before I take it off the four jaw chuck So my original plan was to um, take this off the four jaw chuck and reverse it and machine this side off. But having looked at it, um, it needs to be uh, seven eighths of an inch wide, which takes it down to just where that uh, jaw ends. Um, so there's about a quarter of an inch to come off the other side of this face. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to whip it off, put it on the mill and uh, mill most of that off and then I can come back to the lathe, fit it back on the four jaw chuck and do the final finish. There's a lot of material being removed off that. Um, so what I'll do is I'll uh, move the clamps around and then uh, 
finish the other sides off but I'll do all that off camera okay so I've reversed the blank in this for jaw chuck and now I'm just checking uh, to make sure it's centered and this is uh, tenths of a thou here so I've got sort of run out something like two tenths of a thou I can't get it any closer so I'm gonna to have to uh, be happy with that so first of all I just need to uh, finish this side off looking pretty good happy with that once it's finished off with a bit of wet and dry so now I need to take uh, around about 34 thou off this face here to get it down to 7 eighths of an inch Well that's 10 thou done, uh, I'll do the rest off camera, uh, completing the final cut on the uh, fine feed. Ok so I've just put it on this mandrel to see uh, how it runs. That was pretty good to me. Ok so I've uh, made two of these now, uh, to size, and uh, in terms of this recess I was thinking about uh, machining it out on the lathe using this tool uh, but having thought about it I think I'm just going to go over to the rotary table and do it on the mill ok so I've got an adapter plate for a 3 and 4 jaw chuck um, on the rotary table so I'm going to centre the rotary table based on the uh, outside edge of that uh, using this coaxial indicator And that looks pretty good. And as a double check to make sure that the table's centred, I've put the reamer back in. That looks spot on. Okay, this is my second attempt at this. I've uh, I tried a 14mm slot drill and uh, must have been blunt or something. But anyway, uh, I've got this 16mm slot drill in here now. So what I did was, uh, when I was on centre, I moved the table towards me 8mm, which put the cutter edge on centre. Now the hub is 3 quarters of an inch, so I've moved the table again towards me 3 eighths of an inch to put me on the edge of the hub. So what I'm going to do with this slot drill is drill to a depth of 9 30 seconds of an inch. It's around uh, 500 RPM.
Okay, so that seems to have gone to plan okay. So what I need to do is to drill another hole, uh, the same depth, uh, but on the inside of the rim. Uh, but I'll do that off camera. Okay, so I've uh, defined the inside and the outside edge in terms of where I need to cut. So I'm going to uh, go to a depth of uh, tenth out of the time initially and uh, just go around the uh, outer edge. I think I need to change this uh, slot drill to an end mill and uh, it's going to take forever is this uh, but I'll continue off camera Well that took a while but I got a pretty decent finish on it. I suppose I could have probably saved a bit of time by sort of plunge cutting all the way around and then finishing off with that but um, I just felt in more control by uh, just using that end mill. Um, so anyway uh, I, I need to repeat the same process on the other side but I'll do all that off camera. Well that's turned out well so far. And what I need to do now is drill six holes, um, one inch in diameter, and uh, I think I'm going to use the um, bolt circle function on the DRO to do that. Okay, so uh, just to centre this on the mill, I uh, used the reamer, and uh, the clamps were all loose, uh, letting the flywheel move around. Um, the reamer sort of held it in centre, uh, so I bolted the clamps down. I've um, set the DRO to zero and uh, now I'll uh, set up the bolt circle function to uh, so I can uh, drill um, six holes around here. Uh, but I'll do all that set up off camera. So this is just a matter of going round and drilling the six holes. They need to be um, uh, one inch uh, in diameter. Um, so I'm just working my way up through some of the drill sizes. Well, I found this 18mm slot drill and it uh, seems to work a treat.
Well, I don't know if I'm pushing my luck, but uh, I found this uh, 24 mm end mill and uh, I've put it in this uh, ER40 collet. Look at the size of that. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. That's what I say. Well, I've even managed to find a slot drill that's uh, one inch in diameter. My lucky day. And now I need to mill out some quarter inch slots for the governor. So I put a little mark with a centre drill on the hub, which is where I need to broach it. Well Earl came up with a great idea and that is to uh, mill a counterbalance in the flywheel like on the farm boy and uh, he's come up with a very scientific calculation and uh, he reckons that if you mill um, an 8mm uh, recess uh, for a length of 4 inches uh, at a depth of around about 3.5mm that should be adequate to act as sort of like a counterbalance. Um, so uh, we'll give it a try. So uh, the first thing to do is again to uh, centre it on the rotary table. Oops, table's come loose. Well this is a bit of a convoluted way of holding the flywheel but it seems to be working at the moment. 
Uh, so I've already drilled through uh, with um, a uh, number 29 drill bit and now I'm tapping with an 8B32 UNC tap. Now um, I've loosened the um, R8 uh, collet holder and um, that will move up and down in the spindle. So I'm using that to uh, tap. It seems to be working, I think. Well, I must say I never thought I'd ever use uh, one-inch diameter slot drills on my milling machine, but uh, it works out a treat. And uh, I can't believe the table moved when I was machining this uh, recess here. Um, so the recess hasn't actually come out as I originally planned. It sort of looks okay, um, just a little bit off centre. Um, obviously, I've got another one to make. <laughs> um, so it's quite labour intensive is this and it's the first time I've ever machined a flywheel from a sort of like a, a billet uh, but I'm really happy with the way it's turned out and uh, I hope you'll like the result, I hope you found the video of interest and I hope to see you later.